Hey, what's up carnivores? Zach here with American Smoke, and today we're gonna to be doing a video on some delicious, thick cut, slow smoked, then seared pork chops. I've got these pork chops in there in a brine in the refrigerator right now, so let's go over and I'll show you how I did that. All right, so we're here in the kitchen, and the first step to making a perfect smoked seared pork chop is the brine and if you've never brined let me tell you something right now lock this in brining is not complicated brining is not mad scientist blah 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 brining is just soaking this stuff in a solution that causes the pork chop to suck in some liquid that's got some flavor in it so you're just adding moisture and flavor to the meat that's all it is no more complicated than that you add some salt into any liquid and it's gonna pull some of that liquid and some of that salt into the meat. That's all it is to it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do that right now. First thing we're gonna add is about a third of a cup of kosher salt. And you could probably go a little lighter. I've already got a little bit in there. Then we're gonna go third cup-ish. And all this is ish, it's all ish. Brown sugar, salt, sugar. We're gonna to top that off with about enough apple juice to cover these things. You don't really need too much. So you're getting plenty of sugar with apple juice anyway. I mean, if, if we're being real here. So just about enough to cover the top of that. Then all we're gonna do is mix it up. Now this is not gonna be a 24 hour or an overnight brine or anything like that. Thinner cuts of meat, even though these are considered thick pork chops, you do not need that long. Don't ever soak a, a chicken breast for 24 hours or anything like that. This is to get the flavor of the brine into the meat and more moisture into the meat. And for a cut this size, where there's not that much thickness between one outside edge and the other outside edge, it doesn't take that long. So you don't have to really get overly excited about it. So we've got that pretty well mixed up. Most of the salt is dissolved. And if you didn't put enough apple juice and you put too much salt, what you might notice is that it has trouble breaking it down, but that's okay. You can always add more apple juice, but I'm not a huge measuring cup type guy most of the time. I just kind of eyeball stuff and I tend to get pretty good results. And so all we're gonna do is just drop this in down into the solution, just like that. We're gonna put this big chunky piece right there in there and that's it. And so they're just gonna sit there and soak. I'm gonna put these back into the refrigerator. It's four o'clock on the dot right now. I wanna eat these pork chops around 6.30. So we're gonna let them soak for an hour then we're gonna rinse them off. After that, I'm gonna be beating them up with some of my Lane's signature rub. Let's go ahead and get these in the fridge. You might want to make sure everybody knows that's not sweet tea. I'm just saying. It's important. Those pork chops have been brining over in the refrigerator for a little over 30 minutes now. So what that means to me, it's time to come outside and fire up the smoker and let it go ahead and preheat up to that 250 degree mark. So let's go ahead, open up the door and get it primed and fired up. It just don't get any easier than that. <laughs> if you've considering getting one of these, it's so easy. I've got my smoke tube loaded up and what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be firing up my uh, smoke tube with some pecan pellets in there. And I just want just that little bit milder pecan flavor to really get onto that pork. What I'm burning in the main chamber is what you typically see me burn competition blend. 15 minutes from now, I'm gonna be firing up that smoke tube and let it get going. So this is gonna allow me to get my chamber up to heat, smoke tube, rolling extra smoke, about the time that those pork chops have been brining for just a little over an hour. It's all gonna work out perfect. We'll be back out here to season those pork chops here in just a little bit. Fire it up, let it rip, tater chip. All right, so we've reached a very serious portion in our cook where we are now been up smaller cuts of meat. When you're probing up smaller cuts of meat, what that means is you do not want to overcook it. You're wanting to make sure that it does not get too hot. Anybody can cook a piece of meat to done. That's, I mean, that's a great thing about a meat probe. It does let you keep it, you know, from being undercooked and raw and, you know, you need certain meat temperatures with pork, but we're trying to get this just right. And so in order to get it just right, we need a meat probe. And what I've done is I've got my trusty Thermo Pro here, and I've got it in the one on the left, and I've got my Pit Boss probe going into the chop on the right. Both are reading around 114 to 116 degrees internal temp right now, which means that this chop right here has got about 15 to 20 degrees left before I pull it 
and then we're gonna sear the fire out of that baby. So we're doing like a reverse sear on one of these pork chops and the other one, we're just smoking all the way to done. And we're gonna see, is it worth it? Is it worth it? And also, you know, they're obviously gonna be delicious. So uh, it's all good. But uh, we're gonna be double checking everything today with our Thermapen 1 because it's scary accurate and it's scary fast. Um, I will be leaving links to this one down below. Also, this, you might be interested to know, this is my first meat thermometer. And this is the one that has been with me since the beginning. This is a Thermapro, and it has been a great unit for me. The only thing I've ever had to do, ever, is replace the batteries. The probe has remained accurate. The uh, screen works. It's water resistant, and I've really liked it. So if you're looking for a lower budget, but reliable leave-in meat thermometer, meat probe it's a great option i'll leave a link below this one is a little bit higher on the price range but worth every penny and this is what you call a meat pin and what you do is you just stick this in and it gives you a reading within one second within half of a degree that's pretty cool i don't care who you are that's cool right there but we're going to let these go for just a little bit longer yeah it's, it's climbing pretty fast so once pork gets to a certain temp it starts to climb pretty fast especially on these smaller cuts and uh, we'll be ready to sear these babies down here in just a little bit all right so we've got a beautiful sear on our chop here i pulled this thing at 135 looking back i probably should have just pulled it at like 145 because it's seared so fast that there's no way that it was gonna raise the internal temp. I had to let it go a little heavy on the bottom side to get the temp up to where I wanted it, but I think it's still gonna be fantastic. The pork chop that's in the smoker is sitting at 146 degrees, which is right where I wanted it. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull that now, and then we're gonna let them rest, and then we'll cut them open and give them a taste. You can see a definite a definite difference in the appearance of these two. One has a sear, one has been smoked on. We're gonna let them rest and then we'll cut them open and see is there a big difference on the inside and is there a big difference on the flavor? What better adventure could you be on? <laughs> you know it's gonna be good. One's just gonna be a little better than the other. We'll find out here in just a minute. Let's go ahead, cut them open and see how they taste, man. Let's be real, that's what it's all about. So obviously since we brine these and we pulled them at 145-ish degrees, we're gonna get a ton of moisture. Let's go ahead and we'll give this one a taste and then we'll get into uh, the other one. Oh, man, that's good. Y'all are gonna find out though that I'm a billy goat. <laughs> the more you watch my channel, you're like, that, that Zach likes just about everything he eats. <laughs> I'm not the hardest person to cook for. This is the one that was cooked, smoked all the way to 145 plus degrees. Thanks to our meat probes, we know that the meat was cooked to the done point. Mm. That is just succulent, juicy, tender. Man, really hard to say who the winner is on this one. I'm gonna have to go back. <laughs> this one, to me, maybe it was where I cut it. I don't know, but it, it, it just had a lot more juiciness. Both of these are outstanding, but um, the flavor from that brine, that lane seasoning, here's what I'm gonna tell you right now. You cook it either way, you're gonna be fine. <laughs> you're gonna be fine. It was a lot more effort to fire up the grill. It was it's more expensive because I had to burn a lot of charcoal to get that going. If I was doing a bunch of them, you know, if I had seven or eight pork chops that I was gonna sear, it would have been much more worth it. But for me, just one, I would say the way this tastes and the texture of this purely smoked chop, I wouldn't worry with it. <laughs> I would not worry with it. This is delicious. This is absolutely delicious. And I like sear. Man, that's just good. That's that Lane's signature rub. I'll leave links to that below. The sear is good. It does add some crunchiness, so if you're all about the crunch factor, which I usually am, you'll get that. Man, like I said, pull it at 140 plus and then sear it real quick. Cause I pulled it at 135 and I kind of had to oversear it a little bit to get that internal temp up to that 145 mark. So y'all make y'all's own call. My recommendation is either, you know, cook this one to hotter in the smoke and then sear, which would probably be the winner. Or this is so good right here. I, I'm just telling you, man, it's gonna be hard to beat. That's just Lane's Signature Series seasoning and some coarse ground black pepper. So good. Got my little friend sitting right here. Mm. 
Oh, that just, that's just kind of winning right there. Man, I know I'm winning. I hope y'all are winning. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to hit that like button for me. Make sure to become a subscriber to my channel if you enjoy this content. And guys, we'll see y'all in the next video.